So we've seen some really nice, nice growth of growth in other areas. Coke Zero had a Cheryl Crow concert, Medal of Honor, we're actually trending a little bit ahead right now for that event. So the key for us is, the 500 is very important, we do a great job. We have a lot of other great events that we need to grow and make sure that we're doing a good job. I, I'm actually super cross. It's interesting, you would think that really fits bike week, right? It kind of doesn't. It's more kids that go to Supercross than anything. And so we're trying to figure out and grow that when you're starting to look at some hotel pricing and some other elements, bike week isn't really something you think is is kid friendly, right? I mean, and so we're, we're looking at this going, wow, we grew it, but the environment in the community is a little bit more adult themed. And so how do we balance those out? And so our team actually, we're gonna, I've got a plan for Supercross because I want to now really try to take that to the next level. We're doing a great job with it, but now when you see this kind of growth, and for us kids are really important. The kids like Daytona for a Supercross race, maybe they'll like us for a NASCAR race or like us for something else. So we're going to try to do a little bit more with that now that we're getting some really good data out of that event. Yes, sir. I have a question. By the way, I just wanted to compliment you. One of the best field trips of any class I've ever had in my life was the Daytona State Television Production class. And ESPN out of Kissimmee and you guys invited us into the trailers for the Daytona 500. I shot it from the hip with my camera, but I obviously don't have permission to upload that to any you know website or anything like that. But I noticed that you know the the tourist things at the racetrack, like where you take school kids around, like these kind of field trips for locals. They're just an awesome idea. And would you allow like a local local videographer like myself, kind of do a behind the scenes what you guys do at DIS right before the Daytona 500, kind of in the same fashion that I did what ESPN does in their trailers behind the scenes for the Daytona 500. Good question. Not sure this is the venue to be put on the spot on the sales pitch. But I appreciate that because I think I'm a salesman, so any chance to sell is a good thing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, we think it's important. Our staff, you know, we're challenged. I think we're all challenged, right? We have to do more with less, right? And so we operate our venue 250 days a year. And yes, we all know about the big events, Rolex, Supercross, 500, 400. But we're running testing out there. We had a Boy Scout camp over where we doubled it. We had 2,800 Boy Scouts uh, spend the weekend with us one time. I mean, we got carting through the holidays. You know, everybody shuts down between Christmas and New Year's, right? Everybody disappears for a while. And we've got hundreds and hundreds of go-karters with their families who come down from the Northeast and Midwest. You know, they're rolling with these campers and the setup to run their little go-karts. So we're always trying to make sure that the property is accessible. How we commercialize it, commercialize it is very important. Uh, we continue to do a great job with our tours. You know, we offer a 30 minute and a 90 minute tour and uh, continue to provide a, a really great experience to get people in places they're not allowed to go during the events. And so when you're in the driver meeting room or you're up in the tower, wow, this, so this is what it is. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been on, has anyone been on a tour lately on our property? Yes, I have. We actually show you the video that they show the drivers before the race. So we sit you in the driver meeting room and say, okay, here are your instructions. You're going to go race to the Daytona 500 in the next hour. Here are the rules. I want you to play that video so that you understand this is what the drivers see. And so it's kind of cool to give them that experience of, you weren't, maybe you weren't here in February and you didn't get in this room, but right now you're seeing exactly what the drivers saw before they went out and had the race. Fans, we want to be inclusive to everyone, right? And so uh, what we're finding, uh, we have the most, um, we're the largest following socially of any racetrack out there. And so we are as active on Facebook and Twitter and producing content for those than anybody else. And we think that we think that's paying off because that's really the young demo that you need. And if you can get the young demo interested in your sport, you hope that they're going to turn into a fan for the rest of you know their lifetime. That's our hope. Um, it's a bit of a concern. Well, advertising in general is a concern. You know, in terms of are you really getting uh, the appropriate return on your investment? You know, whether you're spending money in, in Tampa, Jacksonville, locally, Atlanta, Charlotte. But what we like about the social aspect, it's one-to-one. -one. You can now communicate to your fan one-to-one -one for the first time. And we think it's going well. That's where we're focused. We're spending a lot of time in that area. Um, I think it's going to pay off. Uh, we're going to have some great content coming with the construction project to attract people and show them how special it is. So that's kind of the focus for us and, and proud that we're, we've got like over 700,000 likes on Facebook and I forget what the Twitter following is, but it's pretty strong. I did a, a Twitter 
um, Q&A on the day of her announcement. And um, the only thing about, uh, you know, there, there is no etiquette anymore when it comes to social space. Right? <laughs> you know, people, I don't know whether it's just the anonymity of it or all. So anytime we can add events like that, we do it. I mean, look, I, this, this property needs to get used. That's the deal. Now, there's, there's a couple things that we won't do. They're a little bit too far. But, but that was a nice event, and, and it's a lot of stuff that people don't realize that we do. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate the time this morning. Joe, we certainly appreciate that, uh, that presentation and all, and uh, very, very much informative.